So before this video starts, I just want to let you guys know that this is the final video in a 4 part mini series about the past and future of Halo Wars. There's a link to the playlist in the description that will take you to the first video. I highly recommend you watch them in order. In this final section, I want to discuss what I would like to see added into the multiplayer of Halo Wars 2. The first thing I want to talk about is the amount of players. I want to see more players in a single game. I don't care if it's chaotic. I don't care if it's processor intensive. Use cloud computing if you have to. It would make the game so much more fun. For me, I found 3v3 to be the most intense and entertaining game mode. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I know, however, that at times it can be frustrating when teams are just so unfairly matched. I'll get into that later. So perhaps with the addition of a 4v4 or even 5v5, this intensity would increase. But I'm not too sure though, it's just a thought. Branching off from that, I think the game should introduce a free for all mode. This would definitely have to have its own maps made for it though, where people will fire away from each other. Otherwise people will get killed far too easily. It sounds like an awesome concept, but again it may be too chaotic. Yet another variation could be a multi-team game mode. This would be a cool little addition that would add an interesting dynamic to how you played. Strategies would have to drastically change as you had to consider multiple teams teaming up on your team. Again, I cannot say if this game mode would become too unbalanced as teaming could become an epidemic. As I have said in the campaign about introducing more characters, I think the same could be said for the races. The game would definitely benefit if we could have more races to choose from, for example the Flood, the Forerunner, and even possibly the introduction of the Heretics from Halo 2. Perhaps this would introduce too many complications in terms of dev time constraints, but I'm not too sure. It's time to start! Another cool addition would be the incorporation of a Covenant drop pod. We seen them in previous Halos, so I don't know why they weren't in Halo Wars. My thought as to why it wasn't added was because the humans had Pelican Transport and ODST Drop Pod, while the Covey had Teleportation. So I'm guessing it could have been a balance issue, but it still could have been balanced in another way. I think that a way it could be balanced for the sequel would be to have a selection spread like a Pelican, with a cooldown of a D-bomb timer to perhaps make it balanced, although then it may get unused. So my next idea that I reckon was a missed opportunity in the first game is the incorporation of human leaders into the multiplayer. Now, I'm talking more like what we saw with Forge in the campaign. Let me give you some examples. Kato could be a weak hero who gives a health and damage boost to infantry. While Forge could be a high damage hero. Finally Anders, she could be a repair hero, or maybe her special ability could be to turn a unit into its next tier of tech. So yeah, can he tank into PT? Now these are just examples, so don't take them too seriously. But I would also like to see more variety of both human and cover leaders to choose from in the sequel. This next feature I feel will be too difficult to incorporate into the game, and that is the ability to take the point of view of a unit, and perhaps take control of it. Kind of like first person mode. Maybe when you go into this mode, you have another screen in the corner which gives you an overall view of what's going on above you. I'm sure it would only be used if you were playing in a more casual pub lobby, because if you were playing customs or ranked play, you need to know all your surroundings. But it definitely would be a nice addition. Now I want to talk about a definite thing that the sequel needs to have, and that is more vehicles from the previous Halo titles. Don't get me wrong, I love the fact that they made up new Halo inspired vehicles like the Vulture and Wolverine and added them to the game. I just think that they should also include pre-existing vehicles. One reason that this wasn't done could again be because of the complication in terms of the meta of gameplay. Let me just list off some vehicles that I think should be in the Halo Wars sequel. For the UNSC we have the Mongoose, used as a scout substitute then upgraded to Gun Goose then Marine with RPG. Not the Kestrel because this looks like a half assed attempt to make a human version of the Ghost. The Rocket Warthog, 
the incorporation of the Rhino into multiplayer, the Mammoth, similar to the vehicle from Gears of War, not sure how it could be useful, the Mantis, the Sabre for multiplayer space combat, the Falcon, slower than the Hornet yet more powerful. Now for the Covenant vehicles. First we have the Brute Prowler, the Spectre, the Revenant, maybe the Shadow, the AA Wraith, the Heretic Banshee, the Spirit, the Phantom, with the same functionality as the Spirit with a 50-50 chance to use either one, the Seraph, for use in online space combat, and the ability to do bombing runs, much like we saw with the Short Sword from Halo Wars. For the Forerunner, they could add the Enforcer, a very cool vehicle from Halo 2. I think that if they could add half of these to the next game, it would be more than enough. The next thing that I believe should be in the sequel should be random terrain destruction, or change. Let me explain what I mean. A bit like in the first game where you could destroy rocks with a vortex or beam, except with the ability to actually change paths on the battlefield. Say a rock slide or avalanche occurs randomly at one point in the game, making ground troops unable to go that way, but also opening up another route. Or even a snowstorm, making it impossible to see a certain corner of the map. This is akin to the Levolution events in Battlefield, or the events that happened in Gears of War. Moving on, I want to talk about the Cyclops. As I said in my previous video, they were all but useless and completely inferior to the Engineer. That's why I think they should have multiple variations of the Cyclops, which branch off from just a building killer and healer. Perhaps it could turn into a mech variant that focuses on weaponry, similar to the Mantis, or a construction variant which decreases the build time of a building. More Covenant leaders to choose from I think will be a welcome addition to the sequel, as 3 wasn't enough. I realise that there are very few who could be considered leaders, as the Covenant has few to choose from. It also comes with the added issue of how you vary the leader's army choice without unbalancing the game. With that in mind, here are a few suggestions I have. Elite Shipmasters, each with a few variants. Brute Chieftains, again with a few variants. Chieftain of the Jiro Hane, from Halo 2. The three main prophets, Truth, Mercy and Regret. Of course, I'm hoping that along with more cubby leaders, there will be completely other races to choose from. Such as the Flood and Forerunner, and they too have their own leader variants. This next one is slightly controversial, as it is about the rock paper scissors mechanics. As I said in my first video, it doesn't really work and they shouldn't be included in the next game. It just isn't necessary in order to balance out how units attack each other. It should be down to each unit's individual stats, and how they're used in different armies that matters. On top of that, the counter units should still do their respective damage multiplier when attacking their preferred target. Going off of what I mentioned previously about space combat, I hope to see it as a game mode in Halo Wars 2. The ability to control space armies will be incredible, akin to Star Wars Battlefront 2, but in an RTS format. I'm pretty sure everyone enjoyed the space battle in Halo Reach, but many felt it was an unexplored mechanic, so that's why it would be better if it was done in multiplayer rather than the campaign, so as to increase the replayability. This next one is something that many of the longtime hardcore Halo Wars fans truly wanted. That being spectator mode, to watch games as they played out. This could be made more in depth through the incorporation of Force Game Chat, to prevent passing information. Of course there should also be game modes where you can see the whole battlefield with no fog, and be allowed to party chat. It's just that the conditions I said before were so as to prevent unfair play. I think that this feature would be most used in customs and ranked play. This next feature follows on from the spectator mode, and that is theatre mode. The ability to create awesome cinematic shots with black bars and colour correction will be the best thing ever. Sometimes I forget to record something and I can't get the footage, so this would also help me out in those situations. As long as it's similar to what they've done in the previous Halos, I'm down with that. Now I want to talk about combat. More specifically, I want to see ocean combat somehow incorporated into Halo Wars 2. It would be an interesting variation to just air and ground. One issue arises though, 
as to how the ratio of land to ocean would be incorporated into the map. Another issue is that the ocean craft may be obsolete and not useful. I'm sure the devs would have no issue in making new vehicles for ocean combat, as they did a great job with the new vehicles they added into Halo Wars. A further idea which I would like to see incorporated into the sequel is a horde mode, similar to Gears of War's horde mode or even Firefight from Halo Reach. It could be a great way to prepare yourself for Super Turtles in public lobbies. I'm thinking the wave should occur in such a way that you don't know what to build in order to counter them. So basically a random order so that it is different each game. There would also be time between each wave to build an army. In addition to what I have said thus far, I would love to see a competitive ranking system in a different lobby. It would hopefully be similar to League from Black Ops 2, where there are rules and certain map rotations. I'm not saying that this will make the game more competitive in the lucrative monetary sense, but it definitely would remove the stigma that it's a kids game. By the same token, I want to talk about the true skill system. I realise that it's affected by wins and losses, but I think that it should take into account numerous variables such as score and placement in games. This perhaps would force people to play more strategically and to see people get carried less. On top of that, it is possible to go down in true skill even if you win against a person slash team with a large difference in true skill to you. That to me just sounds ridiculous. You should at least stay the same rank and hopefully this is fixed for Halo Wars 2. The last few points are just little things I wish to see in Halo Wars 2. One of those being more cover. I think that there wasn't really a lot of cover for infantry to garrison into. Perhaps this would create too much clutter so of course care would have to be taken when designing maps. Another idea that shoots off from this could be that vehicles that are destroyed could then be used as cover for infantry. For example, a down pelican could transform into real time cover, changing the battlefield each game. This may place too much strain on the console though. That's where my idea for permanent environmental destruction comes in. Much like the later battlefields, but on a much grander scale. The ability to forcefully create paths would be an awesome functionality to the meta of the game. Finally, I would hope that more Spartans are able to be built, perhaps 5, and that you could customise each one to have a different weapon, like they had in the Halo Wars campaign. So in the previous video, I talked about being able to zoom in further. Well here is a better representation of what I meant. This is alpha footage from Halo Wars. I know it's a developer build, but look how awesome it is to zoom in on a unit. Now I will conclude as to what I want to see in Halo Wars 2 as a whole. Overall, I am optimistic that the game will be just as good as Halo Wars, but wary not to be disappointed if many of the things that I have mentioned aren't in the final game. This is due to a few things. First, it's the people who are making it. Microsoft for one, are known for shooting for efficiency over quality. This is how they want their games to be produced, in order to make a quick buck. I can understand however, they are a business after all. Now 343 Industries are decent, and they're not that bad. But my biggest worry is Creative Assembly. Not knowing who they were, I trawled through the comments on the reveal trailer, and found out that they had made a few RTS games. That sounds alright so far, but then I found out that these games have received very poor reviews in part because of the buggy releases and type of gameplay. So this early on, without knowing much, I guess this is where my biggest worry lies. I just hope they keep the core gameplay of what made Halo Wars great, and just improve upon it, because it definitely needed some improvement. As always guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, a lot of effort went into making this very very long video, and I hope you guys appreciate that. So if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing, and if you haven't done so already, you should check out the other videos in the 4 part series. There should be some annotations on the screen, and 3 links in the description if you're on mobile. Alright thanks again guys, cheers.